Happy Friday, kindergarten, and welcome to today's Read Aloud. Today's Read Aloud is called Sarah Bella's Thinking Cap. What a cool name is Sarah Bella. It's kind of like Arabella, but it's Sarah Bella. Look at that. <laughs> the author and the illustrator is the same person. It is Judy Schatchner. And doesn't this person kind of look like Arabella? Just a little bit without curly hair? <laughs> so let's see what this story is going to be about. If Sarah Bella drew these sh things, she's a very good artist, right? Okay. Sarah Bella had no time for small talk. In fact, she never talked much at all because she was too busy thinking. She thought about big things and small things. And oodles of in-between things like ants and uncles and doodles of poodles. What do you think, Pinky? There's a lot of things in these pictures. Can you see something in the picture? Name something. Pinky's thoughts would remain a mystery, but there was nothing mysterious about her family. They loved puppets. painting pictures and playing guitar. Most of all, they loved their Sarah Bella just the way she was with her feet on the ground and her head in the clouds. To Sarah Bella, there was nowhere she would rather be than dreaming of painted ponies racing across the sky. Some ideas came as a complete surprise, while other notions were coddled and cared for like rare plants in a well-loved garden. I need to read up on you, mister. There was never a doubt that Sarah Bella had a green thumb for thinking. The problem was no one ever knew what she was thinking about. Her teacher, Mr. Fantasi, had a knack for knowing just what Sarah Bella wasn't thinking about. And that was schoolwork. Sometimes all it took was a word a sound, or the scent of Samantha's magic markers to carry her thoughts away. And that's when Mr. F, who was really very nice, had to send her home with another note. And this made Sarah Bella feel terrible. The notes never upset her parents because once upon a time, they got sent home with notes too. Really, said Sarah Bella? really replied her mom. You have daydreams in your DNA. At bedtime, Sarah Bella cuddled up her big sister, Cece. I wish I knew how to focus, said Sarah Bella. It's easy, said Cece. All you have to do is take deep breaths and squint. 
At school the next day, Sarah Bella followed her sister's advice, but all she got was a dizzy spell and a visit to the school nurse for an eye test. One night during a math facts memorizing meltdown, a bear of a thought dropped by for a chat. I have a good head for numbers, he said. I can see that, replied Sarah Bella. Keep me in mind if you ever need help, said the bear. I'll consider it, said Sarah Bella. And that was her first mistake. The second was taking the bear to school the next day. I sure hope you left some room in your head for math facts, said her sister. There was always room in Sarah Bella's brain for one more tantalizing thought. Just not math facts. By the time they arrived in class, the bear had fallen asleep, but waiting in the wings was an odd flock of birds who didn't know the difference between an egg and the number eight. That's when she heard Mr. F calling out her nickname. Earth to cerebellum, he said. A penny for your thoughts? She's not thinking, said Russell. She's daydreaming. Daydreaming is an awesome kind of thinking, said Mr. F, but not during class. That afternoon, Cerebella stayed in at recess to catch up on her work. She liked sitting at the round table in the quiet room. I know you can do this, Cerebella, said Mr. F, handing her the very last quiz. Just put on your thinking cap and focus. Cerebella began to imagine what her thinking cap might look like, and then she turned back to her pa papers. Right before the bell rang, Mr. F had Cerebella hand out the weekend assignment. They were always something fun. What do you think, Cerebella? asked Mr. F. An otter popped into her mind, but that was just the first thing. Before she even got home, kissed Pinky and put on her comfy bunny slippers. Cerebella had already thought of a thousand extraordinary things. By dinner time, she'd run out of paper, had an upset tummy and a great mess, a great big mess on her hands. That night, just as Cerebella was about to give up, a whale of a thought appeared in the horizon. The closer it got, the more beautiful it became. And though it was the most enormous creature she had ever seen, Cerebella felt unafraid. Do you know what I think? asked the whale. I can see what you think, replied Cerebella. Cerebella. And so should everyone else, said the whale. To share it, you've got to wear it. Then the whale blew Cerebella a kiss before she swam off. This gave Sarah Bella an idea. She found a brown paper bag and a ruler for measuring. Then she rounded up some old magazines, pretty papers, pencils, pastels, stickers, and stamps, along with her favorite drawings. For the rest of the night, she clipped and colored, pasted and painted until her project was done. Monday morning, everyone was eager to share their weekend project. A penny for your thoughts, said Mr. F, as the kids set crisscross the applesauce on the floor. Who's going first? To the surprise of all, it was Sarabella. If you want to share it, she said, standing in front of the class, you've just got to wear it. And that's exactly what Sarah Bella did. When she placed the most spectacular collection of doodles and daydreams right on top of her head. So that's what you've been thinking, said the kids in awe. 
Lara saw unicorns, and Xavi saw planets. Dylan saw a cat, a snake, and a feather, while Nate reported seeing clouds with a touch of bad weather. A penny for your thoughts, said Mr. F., said Sarabella. I think, he said with a smile, your thoughts are worth more than the, all the pennies in the world. On Tuesday, Bob came to school wearing a thinking cap of his own. Sarabella really liked it. We have a lot in common, said Bob. My thoughts exactly, agreed Sarabella. The end.